Let's have another go at it, shall we? Bum, 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 ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Well, howdy there. Welcome to another fine week, or fine lecture, I should say, here at Sisseton Wapenden College with your favorite professor, Victor Singing Eagle. English Composition One, Sisseton Wapenden College. Now, I have a whole bunch of junk to dump on you in this last few days. We're on the home stretch right before the final. You ready? Let's get started. First things first, we got a whole bunch of important announcements. I'm going to try to go through them quickly because we're running out of time. Upload your daily journal entries now. I think I even created a place for them, did I not? They're somewhere down here. Let me show you, 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 let me show you. No, that's not it. There it is with the Hello Kitties. Aren't they cute? I asked AI to draw that for me. Did a pretty good job. So click on that and you can upload your journals there. What else? It says essays are graded, but I lied. I'm still working on them. I'm so behind with this CDL class that has just been thrust upon me like greatness. But um, it's a lot of work. So I got to balance that out and jump on it. I got to get your essays done this weekend. What else? 251 days till Christmas. Oh, I hope everybody in this class wrote an essay for Mr. Owen, Dean Owens, who's given away a free laptop for the best essay. Did you write one? Hmm. Free laptop. What else? Now, I talk too much. Let's jump back to my cute little car thing. We're going to talk about ad nobitatem and ad adiquitatem, which is, uh, well, let me see. I'm going to share a little teeny tiny bit. Let's see if I can make this pull up. There we go. We did this and uh, critical. So, Here's how it works. Ad nobitatum is an appeal to novelty, the newness. Because it's new, it's better, right? Let me see what examples I have here. This new smartphone model must be the best on the market because it's the newest, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just came out last month. This has the latest technology. Uh. Now, the example, it's twin, evil, twin, well, actually, they're both evil, is ad antiquitatim, appeal to oldness, the classical quality. Here's how it works. So we got the fact. X is newer or older than Y. Therefore, X is better than Y. So I just gave you the smartphone example. By the way, if I'm going to go ad antiquitatim, the appeal to oldness, here in my hot little hands is an iPhone 1? I don't know. And I love this little thing. It's cute. Let's see. It doesn't... I mean, it's cool and it's smaller and it's got the cool slip, slippity... Never mind, I'm talking too much. The thing is, I can't do a darn thing with this thing. It's old. It's outdated. Uh, it doesn't have enough gigabytes to even comprehend the newest apps. Line and WeChat, none of them work. Facebook uh, from an iPhone 1. Public re NPR, YouTube, can't get them to work. Too old. So we've got that going on. Now, why am I whining and complaining about this? Because this is a fallacy, you see. When you say that anything that is new Therefore, it's got to be better. We can make, we can poke all kinds of holes in that argument, can we not? The same thing with appeal to oldness. Now, I had a nice chat with online AI about this the other day because, believe it or not, I like to play with AI a lot. I'm going to read a little bit of the script that I actually, you know, you got to play with AI too on your own and you'll see what I'm talking about. I was using, I don't know if it was Grok or ChatGPT. Here's what I said. <clears throat> oh, one more thing. 
Do you know how people love nostalgic stuff? I'm referring to ad antiquitatem, by the way. Let's pull up what I love. Oh, I passed it up. Where's my love? <laughs> went too far. Too far. <laughs> there we go. Uh, if you know anything about me, you know I love a good 1974 Dodge Charger with a 440 Hemi, four-barrel carburetor, dual exhaust, SE Brougham. Never mind, let me read. <clears throat> Do you know how people love nostalgic stuff? For example, I go crazy for a 1974 Dodge Charger SE Brougham with a 400 or 440 engine, four-barrel carburetor, and Hemi engine. Personally, I think the way automobiles are made today cannot compare. It seems cars today are all uninspired, cookie-cutter, designed, over-complicated, over-plasticized, over-priced computers on wheels, with more doodads and gadgets on it, just more stuff to break. But surely, developments in modern technology have made vehicles more fuel efficient and better for the environment, right? What are we supposed to do with this, especially in light of the ad antiquitatem fallacy? Or uh, that one says ad traditionum. It's supposed to be ad antiquitatem. We did ad traditionum before. So maybe they're triplets, three evil twins or triplets. So that's what I asked AI. AI responded the flag. It's understandable to have a preference for nostalgic items like classic cars due to their unique design, craftsmanship, and sentimental value. However, it's essential to recognize that ad antiquitatem fallacy occurs when we assume that something is better simply because it's old or traditional without considering relevant factors. In your case, you can appreciate the charm and appeal of vintage cars while, while also acknowledging the advancements in modern technology that have improved fuel efficiency and reduced environmental impact. It's about finding balance between nostalgia and practicality. You might discuss how modern cars have features like hybrid electric engines, advanced safety systems and connectivity options that offer benefits beyond what older models can provide. By acknowledging both positive aspects of traditional design and the benefits of modern technology, you can avoid falling into the ad antiquitatem fallacy and have a more informed perspective on automotive innovation. Same thing goes with our household appliances, by the way. I was listening to NPR the other day NPR said something like a refrigerator designed in the 1970s versus a refrigerator that is designed right now. A refrigerator now will save you money because it uses 5% less energy than those old 1970s refrigerators, which are actually better looking, but still, and heavier and stronger and no internet connectivity. Why would I want to put internet on my, never mind, I'm not going to talk about that internet on my refrigerator. All right. Let's flip back to our doohickey. There we go. Yes, our lesson plan, because I have to bother you a tiny bit about the MLA. Are you ready? I got to do this fast, too, because I got to teach an MLA or CDL class in like less than an hour. Woo. All right, we're going to get this done quick. You ready? Here we go. <clears throat> so MLA stuff. If you know anything about MLA, you know that I have been harassing students with both MLA and APA. However, if you, I haven't really, really drilled you with it that much, right? <clears throat> right? Because in your final paper, you need, I think it's at least three in-text citations and three sources, if I remember right. I don't have the directions and I'm too lazy and I don't have enough time to go back and read the directions. However, here's how it works. Let's say you make a sentence like old cars, although better looking, are not nearly as efficient 
efficient as cars that are now built in modern times. Okay. Now, if you want to cite, prove it with some, a source, you would put in parentheses at the end of that sentence that you just made. Old cars are not nearly as efficient as modern cars, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. The end of that sentence, you're going to put in parentheses the last name of an author that you have read. And if it's a paperback source or a newspaper or magazine or something, some hard copy, you're going to put a page number. Or if you've got a website, you just put the author's last name and no page number, of course. Just put the author's last name. That's how MLA works. Uh, in this case, I use my example. I use color coding just because I have ADHD, something terrible. You probably figured that out already. Singing Eagle 8. Oh, yeah, that's probably, let's see what I, well, I can't even remember what I put on page 8 of this book. This is not related to cars. It's just an example. Oh, South Park. Cool. In the South Park episode, Royal Pudding, the princess of Canada is kidnapped, and Ike, the baby adopted by Kyle's parents, joins the Canadian army to rescue her. Whatever. Never mind. That's just an aside. So, end of a sentence. When you make some statement and you want to back it up with some research, you're going to put author's last name. If it's an electronic source, you don't need a page. If it's a paperback source, Oops, wrong paper. Use a page number. Now, at the end of your paper, first we did the end of your sentence, right? Whenever you make some statement, you're proving it with some research. Now we're going to say where we got it. That's where you put the full works cited page. This is called a hanging indent, by the way. See how the last, first, and then it indents. Well, that's called a hanging indent. If you don't know how to do that, don't worry. You can go online and type in how to do a hanging indent, and it will tell you, okay? Um, we got our author's last name, first name, in quotes, the title of the article, and then italicize the main source, such as a main website, or if you're doing something like uh, the title of a chapter of my book, which is, it's a matter of coursework. And that would be the title of my article. And it's found in the book, The College Writer's Fact. And then the date, month, and year of publication. And if it's an online source, you're going to put your URL. Now, I don't expect you to know this perfectly. But I will, and I will be gentle when you work on this on your final, but I'm just happy if you have an idea of backing your BS with some research. Because remember, we need three of these. I think it's three. Go back and check the directions. Anyway, you need to back your BS with some research at the end of your sentence. Your author, where you got that information from, at the end of the paper, on the very last page, work cited, the full citation. If you don't know how to do this, let me know. Send me an email, send me a text message, or you can just, if you're sick of hearing my voice, go to the Purdue Owl. You know what? How are we doing on time? I bet I spoke for 11 minutes. Nope, 13. I'll show you the Purdue Owl really fast, and then I'll call it a day. P U R D U E O O W L M L A. Look at somebody else looked it up right there. Boom! Come on. That doesn't say Purdue. Never mind. Gimme! See, there's even a sample paper. It says how to do works cited, the basics, in text citation. This is the Purdue Owl. P U R D U E Owl. O W L, which stands for online writing lab. Got it? All right. That's enough of me yakety yakking for now. Thanks so much. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.